What is going on guys? It is WrestleMania here, back with some more news. Oh my goodness, what a roar. The Wyatt Six are here, and they managed to destroy Raw. Join us now as we look at this week's edition of Raw, as well as the wildest news stories and rumors you need to know, including Raw being destroyed and the body count, the real reason behind Drew McIntyre quitting WWE, and the New Day breaking up, Ricochet's return is doubtful, more crossovers with WWE, and much more. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive lists. Also check out our new videos on WrestleMania XL. As always, we won't recap the show, but just look at the good, the bad, and the downright ugly. As always, we start off with the good as number one, well worth the wait. Uncle Howdy promised a massacre, and he delivered with the WWE Universe witnessing arguably the most brutal and bloodiest debut of a wrestler or hero faction. The carnage inflicted by the Wyatt Six made the Bloodline 2.0's recent destruction look like kid-friendly entertainment in comparison. The segment was pulled off perfectly, whether it was throwbacks to Brody Lee's AEW debut or the sick twist on the Firefly Funhouse characters Huskus the Pig and Rambling Rabbit. The segment was nothing short of horrific, and if the rumors of WWE wanting to downplay supernatural elements are true, this was a skillful way to portray the group as something from The Devil's Rejects or some other horror film while keeping things realistic, at least by wrestling standards. The million dollar question is where the WWE goes from here, as fans expect a strong and credible follow-up. After all, attacking a wrestler is one thing, but murderizing an entire backstage crew and half the roster is something else. Nonetheless, fans couldn't have asked for a better debut of the Wyatt Six, and for many fans, the debut was worth the wait, as more than a few fans were beginning to get frustrated by what seemed like an endless string of QR codes. Number 2. Otis Breaks Free Three cheers for Otis. The big guys finally had enough and broke free from Chad Gable, taking the rest of Alpha Academy with him and launching what should be a promising babyface run for Otis, but as for Maxine Dupree and Akira Tozawa, that may be a different story. The finish was long overdue and a bit anticlimactic, but it did the job, and the twist with Chad Gable's brutal beatdown later in the show should keep fans guessing whether Gable is finished with his students or he has bigger things to worry about, that being Uncle Howdy. Number 3. Money in the Bank Qualifiers Kudos to the WWE for making the most of its Money in the Bank qualifiers by making them triple threat matches. The triple threat stipulation simulated the matches multi-man and multi-women format and gave more superstars TV time. They even tried to use the women's match to set up a Liv Morgan vs. Alina Vega match by having Morgan distract Vega, costing her the match. Number 4. Liv Morgan segments continue to sizzle The last night's segment between Liv Morgan and Daddy Dom was another sizzler as Morgan dared Dom to get his vest back from her by taking it off. Damien Priest's timely arrival was hilarious as he played a pseudo-dad to Dominic. The Liv Morgan Dominic Mysterio storyline is an example of a storytelling fundamental, giving viewers a chance to experience wish fulfillment through the characters on screen. Let's face it, who wouldn't want Liv Morgan throwing herself at you and having Rhea Ripley waiting for you at home? Number 5. Seth Rollins is back The Visionary is back and he's already back in the world title picture. Rollins' surprise appearance and Damian Priest giving him a title shot at Money in the Bank has fans talking as they wonder whether Priest can be a healthy Rollins and who will be champion when Gunther challenges him for the title at SummerSlam. I think one tweet put it perfectly, this is The Undertaker vs Shawn Michaels. Number 6. Hoss Fight There's nothing quite like a Hoss Fight, and fans got it last night with Sheamus channeling the Celtic Warrior of old and taking it to Bron Breaker. The finish of Ludwig Kaiser attacking Sheamus worked because there was no need to have Bron beat Sheamus yet, and the finish leaves things open for a Sheamus Bron rematch while building the Sheamus Kaiser feud. And Drew McIntyre quits. I quit. AJ Styles said it at Clash at the Castle against Cody Rhodes, and now it must be contagious as Drew McIntyre walked out of the WWE last night, leaving fans speechless. A clever follow-up from his controversial loss to Damian Priest on Saturday. But that was a good one about the bad is, number one, another boring breakup. Is damage control breaking up? As we've asked before, which WWE faction hasn't been broken up? Raw was magnificent, but that doesn't excuse the WWE's lazy booking of another breakup storyline. Judging from things so far, the WWE is likely already planning the Wyatt Six breakup. But still, nothing downright ugly, and Raw was nothing short of phenomenal. Last night's red brand overdelivered even before Uncle Howdy and his cadre of creeps showed up, with Seth Rollins returning, Otis breaking free, and Drew McIntyre walking out. This was a type of show a promotion should deliver after a PLE, capitalizing on the added eyeballs from it and giving them a reason to tune in. What did you guys think of Raw last night? Let us know in the comments down below. Now let's move on to the news. Now first we looks at Raw Destroyed. At top of the day's news is the incredible debut of the Wyatt Six. Raw ended with the group debuting and as promised, inflicting a massacre on the backstage area. 
The eerie segment showed five individuals in bizarre masks standing over many fallen production team members, WWE officials, and even wrestlers. Fans are trying to piece together just what happened and as you might expect, the WWE wanted to leave fans guessing as to who was laid out and what the future holds. Fans saw Chad Gable laid out in the backstage area with a bloody head which led to fans believing Chad had been future endeavoured to that great squared circle in the sky. But this is what seems to be the group's victims based on what we saw on Raw last night. Carmelo Hayes, Gunther, Dominic Mysterio, Triple H, Chad Gable and Cody Rhodes. As you can see, the Wyatt Six took out heels and babyfaces alike, which means that no one is safe. One question to ask is whether the victims were targeted because of a link to the group, or was this a random attack to just show how dangerous the new faction is? What do you guys think of the Wyatt Six debut? Do you think the WWE can follow this up on next week's programming? Let us know in the comments down below. Next up, how did the fans react to the Wyatt Six debut? It looks like Wyatt Six made a great impression on fans attending Raw, as a new report shows the group getting a standing ovation following their debut. Unsurprisingly, WWE has already released a Wyatt Six t-shirt, and if the group proves successful, it'll likely be a huge moneymaker. Next up, the real reason behind Drew quitting. And what's going on with Drew McIntyre? Not only did McIntyre announce he's quitting the WWE, but he also deleted his social media accounts on X and Instagram. While there's no official word on what's happening, this is obviously a storyline. Nonetheless, what's the real reason behind the storyline? Is Drew taking off time to spend with his friends and family? Is this a way to build heat for Drew's white hot program with CM Punk? Is this a good way to take some other heat off for WWE from the unpopular finish to Drew vs Damien at Clash at the Castle? Now, fans have seen bogus retirements before, including AJ Styles' recent retirement announcement that he used to set up Cody Rhodes for a beatdown. In Drew's case, this likely has something to do with CM Punk's announced appearance at SmackDown, with some fans feeling Drew will deliver a grade A beating to Punk this Friday. While this is a long one, some fans believe Drew knew about the coming apocalypse from Uncle Howdy and decided to bail. Regardless, Drew's abrupt resignation has fans talking, and it's a reminder that you can book more than one major storyline without burning fans out. Although everyone is talking about the Wyatt Six, other things are happening, which only adds to the excitement driving the WWE. Next up, WWE crossing over with more promotions. Now you ain't seen nothing yet. Well, that's clearly the WWE's policy when it comes to strengthening its presence in the wrestling industry, as a new report indicates the WWE plans to expand its current cooperation with other promotions. Lucha Libre Online is reporting that WWE is looking to establish alliances and or agreements with companies in Mexico and Puerto Rico, the intention being to create partnerships similar to what they're doing with TNA, NOAA and Marigold. What do you guys think of the WWE working with these other promotions? Do you believe that they can help WWE and the promotions it works with? Next up, The New Day breaking up. Is this the end of The New Day? What was once unthinkable could be happening as it appears that Xavier Woods may be tired of playing second to Kofi Kingston. At least that's the message Karrion Cross is trying to poison Woods' mind with. If you saw Raw and you likely noticed the disgusted look on Xavier's face when Kofi accepted Cross's challenge, which was made to both members of The New Day without asking Woods if he wanted to fight Cross, Meltzer thinks that WWE may finally break up The New Day and noted on the Wrestling Observer Radio, I guess they are going to break up The New Day. I mean, nothing lasts forever in WWE. Here's the problem though, if you break them up, neither of them are going to do much. The New Day hasn't been doing much for at least two years and a feud could give Xavier and Kofi some high profile matches. The biggest factor in their split is whether the WWE Universe will go along, especially given their love for all three members of The New Day. Next up, Ricochet return, doubtful. It looks like the rumors of Ricochet making one or more appearances before his WWE contract ends were unfounded. There were whisperings that WWE was thinking about bringing the future of flight back for a match or an angle after how well Braun Breaker's beatdown on him on Raw went. While this could change, the WWE may feel there's no point in bringing him back when he's leaving for another company, especially since Braun has competition from Sami Zayn and Sheamus. And finally, more details on PLE Revival. Last but not least, more details are emerging on the rumors of WWE bringing back its Bad Blood PLE. PW Insider Elite reports that WWE could bring the show back on 5th October, the same day that the original Bad Blood debuted. PW Insider is also reporting that the State Farm Arena in Atlanta, Georgia is a possible venue. But there you have it folks, our look at Raw as well as the wildest news stories and rumors you need to know. Be sure to leave your comments down below and I'll see you next time with some more wrestling content.